The uh, next thing to do would be pull off these plates, jump down in there and install the little uh, T's that need to be installed there. And uh, then <clears throat> I've got to dig a trench out here for about mm, 20 feet, install the inlet pipe, rise it, cap it. And then it's time to go down the hill. I'll go down the hill and uh, run the affluent line down there, then down to the leach field, which is down there by that distant pile. So I'll be just beyond it. So, but first I'm gonna jump down there and see what there is to see. Inlet. That filter needs to rest in such a way that its top comes out underneath the hole here. Because other, if it doesn't and we glue it in there like that, then we won't be able to pull the top out of it so that we can clean it. Well, there's quite an echo in here. This is the inside of the tank. And, um, you know, ordinarily that filter would just pop right in here but because that handle and this pipe need to clear the edge of that manhole okay so here's my fix I've got an extension pipe about I don't know, eight ten inches long and I've got primer and glue so I've inserted a straight coupling in here it fits in here pretty snugly inside this cast to seal this is a rubber uh, insert sleeve that goes through the concrete and allows pass through watertight. It's kind of nice. First primer cleans it, cleans any dirt or ink or you know, anything like that that's on the uh, parts. Doesn't take much of this stuff, a little goes a long way with the primer anyway. Glue will set up. Uh, Fairly rapidly. Put it on all surfaces. And make sure, if you're doing this, make sure that this is a glue that is approved uh, for installation, for use when you install your septic system. Some of these codes can be very picky about what kind of glue you use. Have the wall help me here. Oh, and you will be met with some resistance on this when you go to glue it together. It wants to push back, especially when it's warm outside. But, okay, there we go. Oh, and make sure we're vertical here. That's good. Okay. But, so now our filter element and handle clears the manhole so we can uh, do maintenance on this when we need to. This is what's called an Orenco filter. That's the whole thing. The filter element fills this whole thing. And this filter is a permanent filter. Whenever, about every six months or so, year, whatever, open the manhole cover, reach down here, pull this out, and uh, you can uh, rinse it off, and then put it right back in. and. Uh, then you have a filter that you never need to replace, you just clean it. Okay, so on the, in this compartment we had to do something similar that we did on the other side. This unit is called baffle. And what it does is it allows the waste from the house to drain through and provides this ventilation space on top to make it easier to do so. Uh, problem is, is that when I tried to insert it into the 
cast the seal sleeve over on that side like it's supposed to go, this part was hitting the underside of the top of the tank. So uh, I had to extend it out like this a little bit too. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe someday if I need to snake it or something like that, having this out here like that will come in handy. Okay, and here we are in the uh, first chamber, the larger of the two. There's that vent I pointed out before. Right below it, where you couldn't see on the other side, is this little knockout. And um, so we got to knock it out. Okay, so there is the piece that we knocked out. This is a mandrel. This is what holds the hole open while the concrete's poured around. It's reusable. And um, it should not have been there. It should have been removed. There's another part that attaches here that should have gone through the wall on the other side. And that's why I couldn't see the hole on the other side because there was about, oh, an inch more of concrete beyond this that I couldn't see. So I just kept hitting with them all until I got it. I'll take that back to the, uh, the uh, septic tank manufacturer. There it is. Here's that seal on the other end. I, I cut off the end of it here with just a little knife. Comes off pretty easily. And then this, that's the end of that uh, filter. We're on the effluent end now, the, the out, the outlet down to the leach field. And here's where we begin to move this uh, down the hill, down the leach field. So we'll put some glue in there, get this set. And then also I have a, a plumber's level, torpedo level. And these uh, levels are unique in that, I don't know if you can see those fractions on there. That helps you uh, determine the fall of your pipe so that you get proper drainage. Now the engineer who designed the septic system said that uh, this affluent pipe coming out on its way downhill to the leach field needs to have a fall uh, of between uh, 2% and 8%. Now, I'm talking in terms of percentage, but this torpedo, you'll notice, uh, is in fractions. And so you just convert that. So 2% is equal to about, uh, oh, one eighth of an inch of fall per linear foot of pipe. And 8% uh, is roughly equal to uh, about seven eighths of an inch of fall per linear foot of pipe. So I know as long as I stay within those boundaries, I'll be okay. And then where needed, dig down and install a 45 degree uh, angle uh, elbow so that we can get some vertical fall down to the next level where it'll slow again. Okay, and there we go. Pipes in, it is securely hooked through the sleeve to this filter and baffle system. Uh, and then we stretch the uh, seal around there and put a stainless steel uh, hose clamp on there. So the fall here so far, it's, it's at one half bar, right about mid range of where we need to be. And uh, so I can leave the pipe this way with this amount of fall. And that'll be fine. I'll go down to the end. I will install the 45-degree 45, uh, 45 elbow. We'll drop it down a couple of feet, and we'll keep going down the hill. It'll be fun! Just remember, after you apply the cement, <clears throat> hold it on there for a minute. Because the reaction, chemical reaction that occurs uh, wants to spread the pieces apart. And uh, so it just, just takes a minute for you to hold it there until it welds. It's important to do a really good job here on your priming and gluing. Because you definitely, on a sewer pipe... <laughs> Don't want to have to come back to fix it.
So one other thing that we're required to do uh, by the engineer and probably by the state on this affluent pipe is we have to make sure not only that the fall is correct, but that the pipe remains at all points at least three feet underground, uh, below grade. So what I have here is just a, a little grade stake that I measured and I know is exactly 36, actually it's 36 inches and a half. We can make sure the pipe is at uh, proper depth uh, along the way. And it's easier than handling a tape measure in the dirt and stuff like that. So we'll just use this. What are you doing there? Hmm? Just sitting there, enjoying the sunset? Enjoying the afternoon? It's so still and peaceful out here. Love it. 50 degrees in December. Uh, first week of December at 8,000 feet. Gotta love it. Not a... Not even a breeze. It's so still. It's so nice. So nice for such a nice day to be working out here. Uh, you say, boy, Egypt, how come you're wearing a t-shirt? And it's because the sun at this elevation uh, does such a good job of warming you, even though it's cold outside. If the sun's out, you're comfortable probably no matter what the air temperature is. So this PVC I'm using is not ordinary PVC. It's called foam core. Uh, or cellular PVC. It's a. Uh, it's got microscopic holes in the matrix of the PVC, and that increases its insulating quality. Remember, we're in a really cold climate here, and so not only do we need to make sure that the pipe is buried deeply enough uh, below the frost line, but it's also advisable to use a foam core PVC like this to aid in the uh, insulation uh, of the pipe. And then that way we don't need to cover, we don't need to surround it with insulation and cover it with, uh, you know, ground screen and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, cheaper and easier in the long run, even though this is a more expensive pipe, it's cheaper and easier in the long run if you're in a cold climate to use this and to mess with all the other stuff, so. So the next thing to do will be to make sure that this pipe uh, has a correct fall, support it, and then we're going to put a small extension on it to so it'll reach this corner. And then a 45 degree elbow, and we'll send it down the hill uh, a little way uh, until we can get to a point where we can level it off again at that uh, two to 8% uh, fall ratio. So there we go, here we go. Okay, and so we've got this first major joint hooked up. I really don't like the bends in this. I guess that means I'm going to have to install a clean out further up the line or something like that, just to, just in case. I mean, really, there's usually not anything flowing, shouldn't be anything flowing through here, but effluent, which is a water with a little, I mean, kind of like real fine solids in it, maybe puree, maybe even half clear. But uh, anyway... Uh, going down the hill, we've got another uh, couple of joints here, another drop that takes it down. We're going to continue this, but I'm not going to go any further today because down at the leach field, I've got to go ahead and install the chambers and, uh, you know, double check our level, install the chambers and make sure that uh, we have that in place so that we can properly line up this affluent pipe with the distribution box and with the chambers. So that'll be next up. But I think we'll do it tomorrow since the sun is getting low in the sky and uh, dinner may be calling. So we'll do finish. We'll try to finish it up tomorrow.